How's it guys, Manashia back with more Alliance War. This is the first war of season 22 and I'm going with Archangel, Tina99 and Quake. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, Quake is back and she is here to stay for the rest of the season. And that's because now I'm going to be doing part 1 in section 1. And then later on in section 2, I'm going to switch back to part 6, which is the part I'm most familiar with. So what I've done the most. So I'm pretty comfortable with that one. So this is a 7 war fight for me. So I did 2 fights with Quake, 2 with Guillotine, and then 3 with Archangel. So I was scouting the map and then I saw Red Garden's going to be my first fight on Arc Overload. And I was like, okay, that shouldn't be too bad. Then I was like, wait, what? Red Guardian and Arc Overload? Why? I mean, why would you place literally the only champ in the entire game who can't gain buffs on a node that requires you to gain a buff? Then I was thinking, is this some kind of trap? Like, is he bugged and I'm gonna get wrecked by unblockable at the start of the fight or something? Ah, uh, but yeah, he's not bugged. It's just a bad placement in my opinion, which is right. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'm not complaining because it's a very easy fight to ramp up my guillotine. So yeah, I'm just gonna do usual combos, you know, bait special 1 or special 2 if I'm feeling impatient. But yeah, I mean, it's a very simple fight. Now I'm gonna throw a few special 2s at the start just to pull up the combo a bit faster. But yeah, usually I would just bait special 1 and then punch afterwards. Just start to rely less on parrying. Uh, I don't need to use any pre-fight abilities for this fight. And yeah, I'm not gonna be doing that much damage until I have over 100 hits. And yeah, the first fight with Yetin is just usually the slowest, you know, it's the one draggy fight, you know, it just goes on and on. It's kind of boring really. But it's worth it, you know, being able to stop the next fight with 100 hits is very nice. Because after those 100 hits, her damage really starts to ramp up quite rapidly. So yeah, I just gotta be patient with this one. And I do throw some heavy attacks just for the combo shield to be extra safe. And yeah, the main reason I bought Gear Teen is because I have a bit of an annoying apocalypse to deal with later on. Um, on the Stunning Reflection mini boss, Poke Dot Power and Stupefy. Actually, no, they changed it now. So long as Stupefy, it's uh, stun vulnerability. So yeah, more damage when they stun, although the stun isn't as long. But obviously, I'm not gonna get stunned, so <laughs> don't have to worry about that. So we get to 100 hits, but the fight's basically over now. Get him to 4%, then I can throw the special 3 just to be safe, it will take him out. And now I bank that combo for my next fight. So yeah, very easy start to the war. Now moving on, we got this Domamu with Power Snack. So yeah, this is going to be the first Quake fight, because Quake is a very good Domamu counter. And Domamu has some animations that are quite aggressive or overwhelming in the sense that it's actually quite difficult to dash back without triggering Dex. So you notice that with Quake, I actually do trigger Dex whenever I dash back, even before I'm in a corner. But that's actually quite nice for this fight, uh, just for dealing with Power Snack. So the first Dex, or rather the precision buff from the first Dex gets eaten up by Power Snack. Then I can just dash back again, which will trigger Dex again. But this time I'll get to keep the precision buff because I triggered it within those 7 seconds of Power Snack. So yeah, nice little detail there for all the Quake nerds. And yeah, that will pretty much just take care of Power Snack for the rest of the fight. As long as I don't remove that precision buff, I'll be pretty much good to go. It's a very standard Quake fight after this. And he does have backup recovery, so you will trigger that regen when he hits 50%, but it's not that much, and I mean, it's Domamu. He's got relatively low physical resistance, and class advantage in this fight is in favor of Quake, so yeah, she should do pretty good for this fight. And he's not defensive, which also just helps make the fight a little bit easier, because I can just dex all I want, no need to do heavy parry or heavy only, although I will be doing heavy only a bit later in this war, on one of the mini bosses, but yeah, this is a very standard Quake fight. You know, as long as you're comfortable quaking Domamu, which I know some people actually find him a little bit trickier to quake. Just due to his animations, they do feel quite overwhelming and it's almost like it's all up in your face. You know, it's quite similar to uh, Venom as well. You feel like you're getting pushed back quite a bit and he's an extra large champ. Uh, but you can also just heavy parry for this fight, shouldn't take that much damage. 
Also, I haven't boosted in this war yet, and I'm not running suicides, obviously, so my damage won't be very high. It'll actually be quite average for this fight. But yeah, I generally don't boost for fights that I feel very comfortable with, and I've done this fight before once, and I've fought a few other champs on this node that aren't as easy as Domamu. Such as Mojo, Man Thing, Doom, Domino. Ah, but yeah, Quake wrecks all of them. Alright, so we're almost there now, just a few more Aftershocks. Ah, uh, maybe two more. So yeah, the main thing for this fight is I just didn't want to drop my heavy attack because then I have to deal with power snack again. But if that were to happen, I would just heavy parry for the rest of the fight. Also, when you drop your heavy and he's not concussed, he can trigger that degen on you. But yeah, otherwise, fairly straightforward fight with Quake. Alright, I'm moving on to section 2 and switching to part 6. First fight's going to be this Dark Enhanced Spider-Man with Rage and Enhanced Fury. Now this is a fight that I first had to do a duel for because... Because he only has 98,600 health, so I had to make sure that Archangel's heavy attack wouldn't cause the rage node to trigger. So basically I just had to make sure that the hits from my heavy attack wouldn't do more than 2,465 damage. And they don't, the last hit does 2,347 when it crits. So this is a fight where you actually don't want to boost for, well really you just don't want to boost your attack. So I'm just gonna go to the Archangel and just parry heavy throughout the fight. Only get one beat on the first heavy. Then I parry twice before I hit heavy again. This time I get the poison. And from that next heavy I get three neurotoxins, which is quite nice. And now he's just ticking away very quickly. Just gotta keep on the momentum. And also wanna bait the special one. Just cause it's easier to evade. And Spider-Man is defensive, so he can't trigger the indestructible. But I mean Archangel can bypass that since neurotoxins will lower ability accuracy. So yeah, it's a very simple fight with Archangel, and I only triggered Rage once, just due to having Assassin Mastery at level 1. So at the end I just back it up to avoid him and just let him melt away. Alright, and so now we have a Killmonger with a Vision Prowess and Power Focus too. So another good matchup for Archangel, since he can counter his Reverberation with the Neurotoxins. And he's also defensive, so he can go indestructible with Stubborn. Only two heavies in and we already have three neurotoxins, which is just beautiful RNG. And I can just imagine how disgusting this guy would be with the Apocalypse boost. Like Horseman Archangel's got some pretty ridiculous damage per second. It's actually quite absurd how those neurotoxins stack. Now I'm also going to do basic combos, um, just because it's more fun than parry heavy all the time. And with power focus too, he is going to gain two bars of power very quickly, but the third one will take time for him to get to. While outside of combat power gain that is, he can still gain power the normal way when you do debuff him. But yeah, not too difficult, just gotta bait the special 2 quickly enough. And here I was playing it a bit slow, just trying to parry and make sure he throws a special 2 before I give him any more power. While he slowly melts away. So yeah, not bad at all with Archangel. And now we have the Sasquatch mini boss with recovery, indomitable, and vigorous assault. So this is a quake fight, although he is defensive, so you can't trigger that stubborn. And during that stage, you will be taking a bit more block damage when you parry. So I actually was considering doing this fight with Archangel, because you know you can shut him down pretty effectively with the neurotoxins. I mean that'll heal block him, do good damage, and counter stubborn. But I mean, I thought like, you know what, I can just Quake this fight anyway. You know, it might actually be fun, it might be interesting. And yeah, so I went with Quake and I am going to be doing Heavy only for pretty much the whole fight. And I was just thinking, why heal up Archangel when I have a full health Quake who can do this fight perfectly fine? And I do decide to throw an invulnerability boost here, which is more for the second fight because that one was a bit more trickier for me. But yeah, it didn't actually work out very well <laughs> and you'll see why just now. Uh, so yeah, we're going with Quake and yeah, just avoiding triggering that dexterity. And now I'm in a corner, we get the Aftershock and the Stun. And now I go in with the Heavy only. And fortunately he was very cooperative in this fight. I mean he was giving me a lot of space, you know, dashing back before doing a new combo. And it was just beautiful, you know. You know, having all that space to adjust and react, you know, just makes Heavy only a lot easier. 
Like even when he would get stunned right next to me, he usually would just dash back first before he starts a new combo. And even when he triggered Wrath of Tenorak and Ghost Stun Immune, he was still giving me a lot of space. So yeah, the Sassy was just being a really good sport. Because I have had fights where the opponent is just super aggressive, always in my face, you know, barely giving me any space and just not allowing me to heavy only that consistently. But yeah, like I said earlier, you can just parry to prevent stubborn. You should still get the fight done, you just take a lot more block damage. Also, you can actually heavy dex for most of the fight, and then you parry just before the aftershock, so you can still get the full aftershock damage. You're just not going to be dealing damage from holding heavy most of the time. So the fight would take a bit longer, but you also take less block damage. And fortunately, his animations aren't the most difficult to quake. I just had to do one duel to test the heavy only before I went into this fight. And then towards the end, he was a little bit less cooperative, but I mean, the fight was more or less over or close to being over. So yeah, it really wasn't that bad. Uh, overall, it was quite a satisfying fight for me. And now we get to Apocalypse, and this fight was far from satisfying. Oh my goodness, the mistake I made in this fight was just, wow, I almost couldn't believe it myself, eh? Like, I was shocked when it happened, like, I was a little bit, uh, gobsmacked, in fact. So, he's got Stunning Reflection, which means I can't parry him, and he also has Pokemon Power, which means I'm gaining power slowly through the degen with Guillotine. So, I go in, and I want to bait a heavy attack, so I can punish it with my own heavy attack. But I was a little bit too close and the second hit did connect and I thought it would actually miss that I'd be able to punish but nope I actually get wrecked for it and now I'm at a huge disadvantage because I lost those 100 hits on my combo and now I'm back to doing mediocre damage. So now I'm pretty concerned about this fight, you know, I'm a little bit worried. Um, this did not go according to plan at all. Uh, so that's gonna be a big uphill battle. So I'm just gonna carry on doing my thing and I just wanna bait the special too because I find it easier to fully dex. And then I can actually parry the last hit to remove Stubborn. Which allows me to actually punish his special 2 without him being indestructible. And fortunately, Tina's light attack does have some good range, which makes it quite nice for backdrop intercepts. So now I'm about 30 hits in, he throws another heavy attack, and this time I only dash back once and then punish, but nope, this time it actually does hit me, because I should have dashed back before trying to punish. But damn, I don't remember his heavy attack being this inconsistent last time I did this fight. Because last season I did take down a rank 3 apocalypse on this node against Kenobi. And apparently I made that fight look easy, but I think I'm making this one look really hard, or at least harder than it is. But yeah, I guess I need to go back to the training ground and just refine my strategy. And by training ground, I mean duels. Lots of duels. And that last heavy I got hit by did crit, which took a pretty substantial amount of my health. So yeah, I'm playing a bit on the fence here. Because the way it's looking, it's just not looking good in terms of health. You know, I'm actually losing this fight. But I thought maybe I could still bring it back, you know. If I just make no more slip ups. And don't rely too much on blocking. Because my health is ticking as well. And I used one pre-fight ability for this fight, so I still had one persistent charge. But she didn't trigger that region for some reason, I'm not sure why. Um, I don't know. I actually you don't really rely on it with gear team, but yeah. So I thought that was a bit odd. Okay, so now we have about 68 hits in and it's actually looking not too bad. It's looking winnable actually. Like if I can just keep up this tempo, you know, without blocking too much, I could actually get this fight done, eh? So I'm feeling a little bit optimistic here. I'm like, okay, 25%, not bad, okay, 24%, 23%. This is going really well, actually, like considering what happened in the past. Uh, so yeah, just played a special two. Then I get hit by the last hit, the very last hit. Guess I just dexted ever so slightly late, and yeah, Apocalypse just... 
apocalypsed my gear team so yeah that was a bit annoying especially as the first death of the season because i was kind of planning to go through this war without dying you know but yeah fortunately the war was looking pretty good in terms of us winning it by the time i got to this point so yeah i'm just gonna revive gear team and then finish up this fight this time i'm gonna play it even more safe I'm not going to bother trying to get the combo shield because now it's pretty much pointless. I'm not going to get to 3 bars of power anyway. And I'm not going to build 100 hits on the combo. So yeah, funny how trying to get a combo shield lost me the combo. Ah <laughs> uh, yeah. Right now my last fight is going to be against this Professor X with Brute Force, Spry and Limba. So I had originally planned to use Guillotine for this fight as well. My original plan was to take out Apocalypse with a special 3. So I can start with the big boy damage for this fight. But yeah, that just went out the window. So I decided to heal Archangel for it. And also just throw in a regen boost instead of using more health potions. Because I do have a lot of those boosts and I don't use them that much. Okay, so with Archangel, I actually want to parry heavy that much, uh, just for now at least, because he does have Limba, so I would rather save my parry stuns for later. So I am going to be doing standard combos quite a lot in this fight, and throwing that special one to help build Neurotoxins. And I also want to bait a heavy attack before I actually trigger the miss, or the falter, or just attempt to punish a special attack, because he does take time to recover from them. So the only really annoying node here is Brute Force. Because if I don't hit him for long enough, then I will get that degen on me. So I don't want to be too passive for this fight. And just saving my parry stuns will make it a bit easier to bait out the falter a bit later. But yeah, I can get some good Neurotoxins going with the special one. And Neurotoxins actually will also counter the falter. So you can actually hit him without actually missing for quite some time. If you have enough Neuros. So I actually did drop a full combo and then the falter only triggered at the end of the combo. But fortunately he didn't punish me for it. And yeah, the fight's actually going really well. He's actually going down quite quickly and yeah, he's not really that difficult as a defender, Professor X usually. Um, at least not on Stubborn. Maybe on Flow, although you don't really need a miss counter to deal with him. So yeah, that's me for this war. Now I'm just gonna wait for Swidia to go pew pew with his Havoc on the Thing Boss and yeah. That's gonna be it for this video, I hope you guys enjoyed, thanks for watching, have a wonderful day and I'll see you soon.